I'm Jess. Um, I am working, I'm based in um, the NIHR at Up West and I work on general healthcare research and qualitative healthcare research. So I was a little bit uncomfortable about um, even putting myself forward for this, but I'm really interested in the moment, uh, at the moment about how we are using or talking about using AI in qualitative health research. And I thought you might all be a little bit further along the line. And although the word precision makes me think of neuroscience and brains and tissues, um, I am also aware that psychiatry is all about also relationships and symptoms which are understood through talk and even the way that we understand and present data of brains and tissues has a narrative that is within the realms of qualitative research. So I know this stuff is gonna be relevant to your work in some way and I'm, I think I'm probably, and perhaps as a community, we've had some meetings recently about AI and qualitative research and I think we might be a little bit behind where you are at in terms of the work that you're doing and that's kind of why I thought I might as well come. I'm not sure that you have so much to learn from us, um, but I'm interested in talking. Um, we have a lot of concerns and that's what I'm interested in, um, in both the kind of wonders of it, what can we do with a whole body of text-based, talk-based, narrative-based, observational-based data um, that AI might help us with. Um, but also the way in which the ethical concerns are very, very relevant to us um, in terms of the communities that are represented in that data, um, marginalised communities, underserved communities, um, people of colour, people from economically disadvantaged communities who are much, much less represented in all of our data. And, and that becomes um, a huge problem when you're looking at qualitative data and the things that we might learn from that, but also much more generally in, in AI data once we start to make more bigger generalizations. And what we are trying to offer at the moment is also uh, applications which come from AI, which might be really useful assistance that might um, support deficits in the healthcare provision where there's not enough time to spend with people, but you can have your AI assistant. And I actually know people who are working in companies outside of our research communities, developing ADHD AI assistants, um, developing uh, tools for journaling, which will allow you to go on, on self-discovery um, and, and sort of go deep, deep processes. Um, so it's happening. And we don't know about the quality of the data that is being used in the generation of those apps. Of course, people who are doing that within the research community are very concerned about that. But my interest is in funding for research, which explores this that in a meta sense, how we are doing this AI research helps us to have guidance, which allows us to be transparent in the way that we um, talk about the AI that we've used. So I can imagine ways in which AI might be very helpful in very speedily uh, characterizing some of our data sets. Um, but I want to know what the human engagement has been with those data sets. Reflexivity is a huge issue for qualitative research, understanding not just the context of the data, but our context as researchers and the way in which we interpret the data. It's all about interpretation. It's not just about uh, having confidence that the data has been accurately represented. There is also this level of of interpretation, it's, it's data, not just of the brain, but in a person, in a social social environment and all of those layers. Um, and I think that's relevant across the board with AI, but it's particularly relevant with qualitative research. And we have amazing tools where AI might be able to be reflexive in that you can say, okay, I want a qualitative researcher to look at this data and analyze it from the perspective of this political perspective or, or someone who's been living in this particular country. It, we might be able to generate AI tools that become, uh, allow us to do all sorts of interesting things, but what does that do? How good are they? And I think it's that level of meta questioning and an evidence base that allows us to say, this is as good as it is right now, we should do more. And I'm interested in funding that will allow us to look at that evidence base. Okay.